Hi, Leather Rock here. What happens when you dye your hair and you're really not happy with how it turned out? Stick around and I'll show you. As you might know, about two weeks ago, I got some permanent purple hair dye from Sally Beauty. And I was really excited because when you've been using semi-permanent hair to color hair dye to color your hair for years like I have, and you can finally get your hands on some permanent dye in the color that you have been practically all your life, you're really excited about it. So I got this dye. I'll tell you what I got in case you don't remember. I got this B2Z Beyond the Zone color in pop and purple, and I got 10 volume peroxide, and I processed it. And I actually did a video about it, which I ended up scrapping because I really wasn't happy with how it turned out. Uh, maybe you've noticed that my hair in the previous couple of videos looked very grayish and pale and like blondish, grayish, lavenderish. And that was simply not acceptable to me. So I finally re-dyed it. And in case we had anybody, I know I'm not fooling anybody thinking I woke up like this, but in a way I did because to save time, because I really don't enjoy video editing, I did most of the dyeing before I went to bed in the wee hours of the night, because I'm actually doing a rare daytime filming. It's actually raining here in ghetto Atlantic City, and it's actually quiet enough for me to do filming, and it's not even dinner time yet. So, allow me to show you how I fixed up my hair. Now, Want to see the colors I got this time around? These, again, were from the Sally Beauty haul that I got. Beyond the Zone BTZ. This is a semi-permanent color jams called Purple Passion. And I also used something that is by a company called Ion Color Brilliance in their Brights line. And it's a semi-permanent cream hair color. And the color is... Oh, Radiant Orchid, and I will show you the box that it came from, and if the light's too shine brighty, too shine brighty, yeah, I'm real eloquent, aren't I? Uh, and I relied on my mainstays from Punky Colors, the Punky Color Plum and Punky Color Purple that I got at Ventner Beauty Supply, also called the Supermarkets of Beauty. And now, you know I'm not uh, uh, subsidized by any of these companies, but this is a logo of the Supermarkets of Beauty. Uh, the Ventner Beauty Supply is the closest one that I usually go to. And uh, I would go to Sally more frequently, but like I said in my last video about the thing, about the subject, if I have to take a bus 30 miles and I have to pay bus fare, and there's a place that's only three miles away that I can walk to, I'm going to go to the place I could go for free because that's how I roll. So here's how I did my hair. Now, usually I start in the back and I make my way to the front. And that's why when I filmed the last video where you saw me do some of the hair dyeing in real time, I started the back and you saw me start with the things in front. But because when I did the permanent dye the last time, the only parts that really took were the hair underneath and from approximately the roots to the midsection. I decided, that, you know what, I'm going to save time and to make sure that I get the coverage I want. I started in front and I wanted to make sure that it was not going to be a color that was going to veer blue, but I wanted to make sure that it didn't look too pink, too red. There is this kind of sweet spot that I like as far as I like fuchsia purples and I like, oh, I like purple, period. I mean, sometimes you're limited by whatever it is you can find. Other times you get all kinds of choices and then that's when you're going to be like me and you're going to get four or five different colors and you're going to put them in your hair and that way you get a nice dimensional radiated effect. It's very hard to duplicate. So, after uh, this you know that I already bleached my hair two weeks ago, so my hair is already porous enough. I did not need to do any pre-treating. The only thing I did was I jumped in the shower and I gave my hair a good shampooing. I used a little bit of uh, conditioner, but not too much. I just wanted to be able to at least comb through my hair. But I didn't, you know, the thing is you never want to use too much conditioner when you're getting ready to dye your hair. 
because you want to make sure that your hair is still porous enough to accept the dye. Now, there, that said, there is such a thing as too much porosity. People with really seriously overprocessed hair, sometimes they can do a dye job, whether it be semi-permanent or permanent, and the hair will be just like a sponge that's so oversaturated that when you put more liquid on it or dye or whatever, it just won't hold. So some conditioner is not bad. Remember, the bleaching that you had done previous, the only slight chance of damage you would have at this point would be near the scalp area. And if you say, well, look, leather, you used permanent dye the last time. That's true. But the permanent dye I did the last time, I only used 10 volume peroxide for the developer. Oh, and by the way, I finally came clean to my roommate about using her uh, developer from her hair dye for my hair. And she wasn't too happy about that. But then we find that there is full and open box, so she'll be okay. Bottom line here, trust me, I won't set you wrong. Now, here is what I did. I used the newest color, this brights in the, I keep on having to look at the box for the thing, Radiant Orchid. Um, this color, let me see if you can see. This. I really like this. This looks almost like a cross between a periwinkle and a fuchsia. Now, being that it's still soaking in my hair, we're not going to see what it looks like when I actually rinse it out. But this is what I started with. And I love these little dishes that you can get in a restaurant supply place or the uh, places that like the dishes they have in Chinese restaurants. And these are really great for putting hair dye in. And since you do not need to mix these dyes with anything unless you're creating custom colors or in, uh, sometimes you can add something to these to make these more translucent uh, also. But these dishes, I really love them. And also the fact that they're made of porcelain, they're not reactive. Even though these are not peroxide based colors, it's still best to use only plastic and glass and porcelain. No metal, nothing reactive. Plus, you know, this uh, hair dye will actually kind of stain your metal, even if it's semi-permanent. I know because I've done that with some utensils before. So I put some of this tube into this bowl. I'm not going to put a lot in here because I really don't think I have too much that I have to cover things with. Now, so I use some of this. And if you could see here, this has a very thick toothpaste like consistency. Every one of these dyes has a different consistency and you'll find some are good, better for certain things. Uh, for instance, one of the other dyes that I used also from BTZ, Color Jams, if you look at it, it comes in a squeeze tube and it's a nice 4.4 ounce tube, this Purple Passion Color Jams. And this is what it looks like. Shake it. See? Again, just putting a little bit in each one of these. Now, the thicker ones that I use are my punky colors. They smell like grape, by the way. I hope I didn't get my dye, dye on my nose, did I? See, you get to see up my nose again, aren't you thrilled? Now, this is very, very thick. I'm going to... Yeah. See? Now, I'm going to just stick a finger in here. This is the purple, and this seems fairly close to the BTZ Beyond the Zone color here. I'm just going to put a little bit of this here because this is a smaller dish. Now, the color that I actually used the most for me... Oh, wait a minute. I beg your pardon. What I just showed you, this is the uh, Punky Colors Plum. This is what I actually used the most of because I really wanted to make sure that it took nice and deep purple. Now, as an aside, sometimes when I start off with this particular dye, the first couple of washings, it ends up looking almost blue-black. So I might be making one of my new subscribers happy who would actually get written in the comments. He, you know, I do welcome suggestions from my subscribers or anybody, really. Uh, within reason. I'm not saying I'll do what you ask, but I'm, I'm willing to listen to what you have to say. One of my newest subscribers said that he wanted me to dye my hair halfway red and halfway black, and he said I should bleach it first. And I just explained to him that since I'd already just bleached my head, my whole head two weeks ago, 
I wasn't going to do that because the last thing I'm going to do is to take a chance of having my hair all breaking off and then I'm bald. And I don't know about you. I'm not saying the bald can't be beautiful, but it's not necessarily the image that I want to sport. Okay. And I do not cut my hair anymore. I haven't cut my hair since probably before some of you guys were born. So I want to do everything I can to preserve the length on my hair. So I'm not going to do anything that's going to risk that. So please don't be offended by that. But that said, I hit it with this plum dye, and which I don't often do too much of because sometimes it photographs a little too blue with digital photography, and that's a real pain in the butt. So let's get the plum here and put some of that in this dish here. And then let's look at and see if there's anything that I could have missed. Now, I'm not going to bother looking at the screen here because that's really not so reliable. Uh, and let's hope that I'm not coating any of my possessions with purple because some of this stuff I do want to keep as is. Okay. Ah. Uh, I see some parts that need some. And this should have a real nice dimensional look. Now, you cannot leave hair dye in overnight that is your permanent variety. I'm sure because of the peroxide involved in the ammonia and all those things, that would be not only very drying to the hair, make your hair very brittle. Then when you lay down and sleep on it, you can break off brittle hair. But that can also do enough damage that once you wash it out and it's dry and you start brushing it and things, you can have yourself some real problems. So only sleep in natural henna dyes, or like they do have a purple henna, black cherry henna, that's henna, as opposed to the so-called henna that has the PPD in it, like I dyed my eyebrows with that one time and I got that contact dermatitis, which you don't want. By the way, I do have a video on my hair dye playlist about the black henna, fake henna, with the PPD giving me contact dermatitis and how once you get contact dermatitis, you never want to get it again because it's always worse. And whatever the dye was that gave you that allergic reaction, the next time you get uh, uh, exposed to it, you are going to get the same exact thing, but even worse. So that's why if you look at the directions on every package of dye, whether it's permanent dye or semi-permanent dye, they always tell you to do a strand test so the, first of all, the strand test lets you know what it's going to look like on a little piece of your hair. But the patch test, that's very important. And I bet most of you don't even do it. And just so you know what a patch test is, and of course I'm going to stain myself doing it. A patch test is you involve a certain part of your body that you think nobody's going to see for a while. And you actually put some of the dye. And I would, if I was doing this the right way, you do this 48 hours before you actually apply the dye. I would take... A, a bit of each of the colors I was using, put it on an inconspicuous body part and leave it unattended for 48 hours. That's the procedure. If you went to beauty school, that's what they would tell you. However, I'll be honest with you, I didn't do that. My face didn't fall off in my sleep, did it? And I think my hair will be okay. But that is a patch test. Now, I did not bother putting any dye on my eyebrows. This is just the makeup that I usually uh, where, and at the end of this video, I will tell you the colors I used. But there is a reason why the package directions say do the patch test and do the strand test. And especially if you do cut and color, if you do hair outside the home, you do hair for your friends, maybe you have a black market shop you do for whoever, make sure to do a patch test because you don't want to give your friends or a client uh, an allergic reaction. And then if they think you have some kind of money and they have an attorney, they end up suing you. Nobody wants that. Suing litigation is no fun, whether you're doing it or whether you're on receiving it. And now let's change the subject. Okay, let's see what the back looks like. I haven't even really seen the back. Now, if any of it is a little bit dry, meaning not having had this fresh dye in there, there is a chance that I assumed that it still had enough dye from the original dye job. You could see better than me because I haven't shown this to anybody. And I hope I'm in frame to see this, for you to see this. I don't know what it is you guys see. 
when you do this, you have to be very careful because as you can see, the ends of my hair are sticking together because of the dry dye. So anything you can do to avoid breaking off hair, you have to do. And remember, wet hair is fragile hair. Wet hair can stretch. Wet hair can break. You don't want to manipulate wet hair carelessly. And you also want to make sure that you have rubber gloves when you've got fresh hair dye in. I mean, even if it's the stuff without peroxide in it, that will stain. And believe me, it will stain. Sometimes I think it stains the skin better than it stains the hair. See, is that a spot that looks like it needs hair dye? Maybe. Let's see. You know what? I'm going to leave that alone because I think that's just one of the other hair dyes. And I don't want it to be all one flat dark color. I've even been known to leave a couple of uh, blonde, tiny little pieces just for temporary, just for kind of highlights. But then what ends up happening is a couple weeks later, I probably will go over it with dye. Because this stuff will fade, but it fades so gradually. And the thing is, if your hair is already porous from having been bleached and everything, this hair dye is kind of sort of the equivalent of permanent, even though it does fade. And ironically, I noticed something when my hair was in braids, and I actually didn't wash it the last time I had it in braids. Even though I didn't wash it for the months that my hair was in braids, and I finally took my hair out, the hair still seemed to fade, even when though it wasn't being washed that much. And that's just really interesting. I don't know if it was because it was dirty. Uh, I really don't know. Maybe because of when I, whenever I would tease my hair up big, the hairspray with all the uh, waxes and alcohols and things, maybe that helped to lift up the color too. I don't know. Now, maybe since I have a layer of permanent purple underneath here, maybe that'll help this last even longer. I really don't know. And you know what? Since you're watching my video and maybe you'll be watching more of my videos, we'll find out together. All right. There's something else that I wanted to mention with this hair dye that I'm using. When I was putting it on my hair, I noticed I had this delightful lemon scent to it. And I totally didn't expect it. Every dye, of course, smells different because um, these colors, the punky colors, have a grape smell. But... I don't know exactly which of these dyes had the lemon. I don't know whether it was the BTZ Poppin' Purple or whether it was the BTZ Color Jams in the Purple Passion. Uh, because, Or maybe it was a combination of this, this, and these two. Uh-oh, I just spilled it. Oh, yay. See, I'm glad there is only this much in the thing because... It just spilled and it didn't get on my carpet. So what I'm going to do, and this is not going to be part of the video, is when the video is over, I am going to get in the shower and I am going to wash this out. And the actual hair dye, once it's uh, been out of the shower and everything, that will be a separate video. But while I still have you guys' attention, I wanted to show you, because I promised I would do this, what I actually have on me right on my face right now. There. Let's see. Now, I have, instead of wearing a heavy foundation, I decided to wear a BB cream because I didn't want to have to be scrubbing my face too hard when I'm in the shower rinsing out my hair and stuff, and I didn't want to risk having foundation makeup kind of get into the hair because then I would have to scrub harder with the shampoo. And the thing is that two of the dyes that I'm wearing don't even say to shampoo out. They say rinse out. So if the stuff that's mostly in the back, you're supposed to shampoo out and the stuff in front, they say to rinse out, maybe because that will keep the, preserve your hair dye longer. Then sometimes it is kind of good to do the package directions. So again, I hope this uh, light isn't too much of a glare, but starting off with the BB cream. Now for the purple eyeshadow, I'm using from the B&H Cosmetics 
This is the power that got me a uh, demonetized uh, video because of the word nude in the title. Because some dodos don't realize that nude refers to flesh tones in makeup. You know, they, these, these bots, these artificial intelligence on YouTube has got to stop thinking everything's dirty, really. I mean, you're going to give us ideas. So, this is from the uh, Nude Rose Nightfall palette. And which is, so it, then you could see that this came off of it. So much for metal being sturdier. I used the purple shade. And all I did see now to get the white on the lids here I used the white from that actually I, what I did was I used my white face Ben Nye and I used that on my lids first and then I took thin brush this is a double-sided makeup brush by the way that came with this B&H eyeshadow palette and after putting the BNA the Ben Nye white face on my eye my eyelid which is really good if you're a pale skin girl like me or guy makeup is for everybody no matter what your gender is but white face is really great to layer under almost any color shadows because it really makes some pop and it's actually I think can be more economical than there's different companies like NYX puts out a little pot uh, the white that's supposed to be an eyeshadow intensifier actually there's something else that I've been using that's put out by uh, Max Factor and I don't know if I can find it anymore but it's a little pot that's uh, supposed to be an eye primer yeah, I don't know how old it is, and I just love it to death. But anyway, anything like that, that makes it is sticky that allows the eyeshadow to really grab. You can use your foundation, but sometimes the foundations will dry down, and then the eyeshadow won't adhere. And if it doesn't adhere, sometimes it gets crumbly as it gets underneath. So that reminds me, I should get, as I need, I'm out of setting powder. I need to get setting powder when I make my next uh, makeup order. And one of my favorite companies, B&H Cosmetics, they have a 35% off sale right now. And I have a gift card. So next couple of days, I'm going to be going makeup shopping. Like, I need more makeup, right? So, oh, getting back to what I've got on my eyes. For this color in here, let me show you what I'm using. Again, from B&H Cosmetics, from the Wild and Alluring palette, I used... This color here. Now I've really been using the heck out of this palette, even though I wasn't sure that I loved it at first. Because when you have a bright color like this uh, turquoise that's in the background, it kind of makes it hard to think. You kind of think it tricks your eyes into thinking that the colors are all brighter than they actually are. I think that makeup palettes should have as their background color either a black or a white, so that you're not distracted by that, so that you can really better judge without having to just swatch the colors. Now the color I used for the inside here was this really interesting rose gold shade that I will put on the back of my hand. I like it more and more the more I look at it. It's really iridescent, it's really shiny, and I tend to like frosts and glittery colors, and I like some sheen a little bit more than I like matte. Even though when you're doing an eye look, it's usually good to have a combination of mattes and shimmers for the different uh, effects to get the dimensional look that you want. Now, what else did I put on my eye? Oh, yes. I used for the above here, I used the same white from the Nude Rose Nightfall palette. I just, right up against the eyebrow, I actually had to take a little scissors and cut an eyebrow hair that was just hanging down like this and it was really getting on my nerves. It's like lately, these past couple of years, my eyebrows in a way are getting almost like uh, those old cowboy guys with their eyebrows get really bushy and curly and stuff. And I don't know what that is. The, the body hairs get all weird and stuff. And meanwhile, there's see-through 
So I have to either dye them or color them, otherwise you don't see. And it's ridiculous because I really do look like this without makeup. It's just they don't have the definition because they're see-through. And I would like to get more permanent purple dye, but I sure don't want to get another contact dermatitis if it's got if it's adulterated by the PPD thing. Now, I didn't want to have problems with running liquid eyeliner, so I did not use either of the two open things of liquid eyeliner I have. I used a pencil this time. This is a wet and wild coal uh, eye pencil. There's a specific name for it, but it's all rubbed off here, and I'm not going to dig around for the packaging and waste time in the video thing. Uh, I did up here, and I did my waterline. And I don't know if you guys do your waterlines, but a good way of doing it if you're not, if you can't see too well in the mirror, is to lift your finger up here and actually use. You can feel along, even if you do it kind of blind. As long as you are sharpened to the point where there's no splinters, because the last thing you want to do is poke your eye with a splinter. And also it would help if you don't live with neighbors to slam a door underneath your bedroom or whatever, because and we lucked out today. Uh, it's been rainy all day today. So there hasn't been a whole lot of riffraff hanging around, hooting and hollering and stuff. So, like I said, I never get to film during the daytime. And between the neighbors actually being halfway quiet and my roommates not blasting their TVs, things are working out well. So I used this also underneath. I did both the waterline. And let's see, now I'm actually using this as a mirror. And I didn't want to do it too thick because I did not want it to smudge. It drives me crazy when it smudges. Everything can be just totally perfect. And then all of a sudden it smudges. And I can't tell you, there's some days when I'm messing with it four, five, six times. Like every 15, 20 minutes it smudges. You can't live like that. And why, if they would just have waterproof liquid eyeliners that budge. And that's why I want to get a setting powder. Because, I mean, if this is happening in the wintertime, imagine when it's summer and it's all sweaty and I don't have air conditioner and everything is humid and stuff. You know, if they would just have a formula that works, stick with it, not change things, life would be so much easier, wouldn't it? But maybe I'm asking for too much. Now, I've shown you this a couple of times before. This B&H Cosmetics Fierce Volume. I love this mascara. It's so inexpensive and I'm cheap, okay? I love this mascara. It's got fibers. It's got a nice size brush. I mean, if there's anything I could change about it, I would like the handle to be a little bit smaller just because I have small hands. But this has, this makes something out of nothing. Now, granted, I already have some on, but look at this. I Because I won't wear false eyelashes, okay? I just, I think they look too ridiculously folk, false. And I mean, I know that I probably look uh, fake anyway. Uh, you see all this obviously unnatural makeup that if I didn't love, I wouldn't wear it. But to me, I think if I was to put false eyelashes on top of all this artificial, that would be just over too over the top even for my taste. And my taste in aesthetics is like your average Christmas tree. All right. So, but if you have a chance to get this mascara, um, especially now with B&H having a three-day sale, by the time you see this, I don't know if the sale is still going on. And I'm not sponsored by them. I just, they make good products and I can afford them. So, and if I like something and I use it, I'll tell you about it. And meanwhile, if somebody decides to say, hey, she'd be a great spokesman, spokesperson for this widget or whatever, you know, talk to me, hit me up. Oh, and this is what I use on my eyebrows. I use really any purple that I think matches. This was a Wet n Wild lipstick and it sent me back a whole dollar ninety nine. The color is called Vamp It Up. And it looks kind of black, but it's actually very, 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 very dark purple. And I use one of my many smallish uh, brushes and I'm not gonna actually touch it to the hair in because I don't want to mess it up. But I just follow along the lines of what I got and try to make them as uh, symmetrical as possible. And sometimes I will take a tissue. I'll show you in a second. Sometimes I take a tissue and 
I actually touch the eyebrow with it a little bit. Just, it'll lighten it up just a little bit, but it'll also make it less likely to smear. Like say I'm wearing a hat because it's cold outside and I'm trudging to the library or going to feed my cat friends. And I can't tell you how many times I've poured a hat, pulled a hat over my eyes and it's gotten smudges from my eye, eyebrow stuff. And that kind of gets old after a while. And then, of course, you got to scrub it out when you're doing your laundry. And I do almost all my laundry by hand. So if you dry it a little bit, it'll help it uh, from smudging. Um, oh, yeah. And I used a highlighter for my face, too. Don't want to forget that. And uh, this is... From B&H Cosmetics, this is the black light highlight. Uh, one of the best highlighters for the real, real, real light skin people. It's so tricky with uh, highlighters. You want to get something that actually makes sense for your skin tone. It's You've got a blue shade here. You've got a pink that actually has uh, green highlights in it. You've got a pink, another pink that has more lavender highlights you've got two golds one gold has green highlights in it and you've got your frosty white i have gotten a lot of good use out of this you see i've hit pan on three of them um i could see in about six months i'm probably going to be ready to buy another one and i'm going to wait for a sale and i'm going to do so because i really like it and also you know how a lot of compacts only open to here this opens to here it's just really versatile. I'm getting a lot of use out of it. You can use this in the inner quarter of your eyes. You can use it up here. I was reaching for the brush that I was going to show you how I applied it, but I don't have that brush handy, so I'll just use my finger. Use my finger. Yeah. Um, but this is the color that I used for here. And here. A little bit here. Here, here. And a little tiny bit there. And nice big mirror. Yeah, and you can see I've anointed it with my hair dye already. So you can tell it's mine. Okay, I hope that's everything that I was going to tell you about this dye. Now, I'm going to head in the shower and I'm going to wash it out. Rinse it out, whatever it is I have to do. Oh, and did you see my cat? Tabby boy. Oh, this is my cat. How you doing? See? The great thing about cats is they're naturally beautiful. Okay, now that you've seen my video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Won't you do that? If you do that and you hit that bell notification thingy, then you'll be notified when I make my next upload. I'm doing it three times a week for your viewing pleasure. And I would love to have you join my YouTube family. Until then, we'll see you later. Bye.